So we'll see the hormones of the hypothalamus one by one. So first is the thyrotropin releasing hormone. TRH is a tripeptide and we can see the figure of the tripeptide made of glutamate, histidine and prolin. A slight uh, modifications are there. You have the pyroglutamyl, histidyl, prolinamide as the thyrotropin releasing hormone. So when TRH reaches the anterior lobe of pituitary, it stimulates the release of thyroid stimulating hormone and prolactin from the thyroid hormone. So the synthesis and secretion of TRH is uh, by the paraventricular nucleus and uh, it is actually synthesized as a 242 amino acid precursor polypeptide. Uh, and the precursor polypeptide contains actually six copies of the sequence. That is glycine, sorry, glutamine, histidine, proin, and glycine flanked by a lysine arginine or arginine arginine sequences. So, in the presence of uh, its actual re release as a pre pro hormone, uh, and uh, it is cleaved by proteases. It is cleaved by proteases uh, at the C terminal side of the flanking lysine arginine or arginine arginine. And carboxypeptidase uh, removes the lysine arginine residues, leaving the glycine as a C terminal residue. This glycine is converted to an amide by a series of other enzymes called the peptidyl glycine alpha amidating monooxygenase. Uh, and uh, concurrently, you have the N terminal glutamine which is converted to pyroglutamine, that is, it becomes a cyclic residue. So, the signal sequence is removed and other peptide fragments are also removed and you get six TRH molecules from a single uh, mRNA. Sorry, uh, single pre pro hormone. So, the multiple steps produce six copies of the mature TRH. Uh, if it is mouse TRH, five copies are produced and the TRH travels across the anterior pituitary gland uh, via the hypophyseal portal system and it stimulates the release of thyroid stimulating hormone from cells called thyrotrops. So the function of TRH, it directly stimulates, uh, indirectly stimulates TH, thyroid hormone biosynthesis and release. That is, it directly stimulates TSH hormone and TSH hormone directly stimulates thyroid hormone. So, you can say that TRH indirectly stimulates thyroid hormone release and uh, TRH influences the release of other hormones like uh, prolactin, growth hormone, vasopressin, insulin, noradrenaline and adrenaline. So, it has several neuropharmacological effects that is... Uh, it can produce activation of the cerebral nerve, so that stimulates the motor function. It can also act on the sympathetic nervous system, uh, stimulate the spinal motor neuron, uh, has an antidepressant activity on the central nervous system, and other peripheral actions like suppression of gastric acid secretion stimulation of glucagon secretion. So, uh, this is the uh, different functions of TRH administration. First is it regulates cell proliferation, modulates cytokine production, acts on immune cells and induces TSH production. So, these are, these are the different functions of TRH. So, the mechanism of uh, uh, action of TRH is mediated primarily by the TRH receptor uh, coupled to a G protein and the TRH activation leads to stimulation of phosphoenocytide specific phospholipase C which converts phosphatidyl enositol diphosphate to enositol triphosphate and 1,2-diacyl glycerol. So, these second messengers then uh, activate protein kinase C and also increases intracellular calcium concentrations. And the TRHR also stimulates the calcium calmodulin dependent protein kinase and nitrogen activated protein kinase. MAP kinase. So,
so it uh, appears to couple gi2 and gi3 and uh, it does not synthesize or activate adline cyclase does not synthesize in cyclicane so uh, this is one example of trh which has a crosstalk with the egf receptor in pancreatic beta cells uh, the trh binds to its receptor uh, dissociates the G protein coupled receptor alpha beta gamma complex into alpha and beta gamma uh, units. You can see it over here. It is separated into alpha and beta gamma units. The beta gamma unit activates SRC kinase, which directly results in phosphorylation of. EGF receptor. This is the phosphorylation of EGF receptor. Uh, tyrosine 845 and indirectly stimulates tyrosine 845 phosphorylation by activation of MMP3 to release heparin binding EGF. Right, it uh, and the SRC also activates inactivates PKC which inactivates MAP kinases. So the SRC kinase inhibits PKC, results in reducing serine 3 on and phosphorylation. This blocks of its inhibition on tyrosine phosphorylation indirectly activates tyrosine 106 a phosphorylation in EGF receptor. So the phosphorylated EGF receptor activates cellular signal pathways like MAP kinases. So this is the uh, regulation uh, the thyrotropin releasing hormone activates the pituitary gland, produces uh, or simulates the production of TSH, which activates the thyroid gland, products, uh, produces T4, T3, and as a result, if the blood levels of T3, T4 is released, is uh, increased, it has a feedback inhibition on pituitary and hypothalamus. Whereas the, if the hormone levels are lower, it has a stimulation effect on hypothalamus.